Welcome to Engineers Academy. Let's solve this problem which says that knowing that the tension A is 425 pound in cable AB and 510 pound in cable AC. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant of forces exerted at A by the two cables. So we have to find the resultant due to the tension in these two cables. So let's say that the tension in cable AB has a magnitude of 425 pounds. So let's say this represents TAB and this TAB has a magnitude of uh, 425 pounds. And similarly, the tension in cable AC is 510 pounds TAC magnitude is 510 pounds and we need to find the resultant so the resultant vector will be equal to the sum of TAB vector plus TAC vector in order to find the resultant we need to find the TAB and TAC in terms of i j and k in other words, we can say that we need to find TAB and TAC in terms of the Cartesian vector representation. We need to find them in terms of I, J and K components. So in order to find the Cartesian vector TAB, TAB vector will be equal to TAB magnitude, which is 425 times the, the unit vector from A to B. And we can say that 425 and the unit vector from A to B will be the position vector from A to B divided by the magnitude of that position vector. So TAB Cartesian vector will be equal to 425 and we need to find the position vector from A to B. So as we, we have discussed in the previous video, it's very easy to find the position vector from A to B. We just need to travel from point A, the starting point of TAB, to point B, the ending point of that vector TAB in the direction of X, Y and Z axis. So in order to reach this point B from point A, we need to travel 45 inches in the downward direction, that is in the negative Y. So we need to travel 45 inches in the negative uh, j direction let me write it here 45 in the negative j so once we travel 45 inches in the negative y we will reach this particular point now from this particular point we need to travel this distance and this distance is traveled in the positive x direction and this distance is 40 inches so we need to travel 40 inches in the positive i so we will reach here and then from point O we need to travel this distance in the positive Z and we will reach this point B which is the end point of TAB and this distance is 60 inches. So we need to travel 60 inches in the positive K direction. So this is the position vector from A to B and now we can find its magnitude we can always find the magnitude by using the Pythagoras theorem by, by finding the sum of the squares of each component and taking the square root. So 40 square plus 45 square plus 60 square under the square root. So we need to take the squares, the sum of the square of these terms and then taking the square root. So we will be able to find the magnitude. Now the magnitude is 40 square plus 45 square plus 60 square and this gives us 85 so this is 85 now the magnitude is 85 and this 85 will be in inches remember and this position vector is in inches as well so tab vector will be equal to we can we can write this 85 inches here so we can write 425 divided by 85 into plus 40i minus 45j plus 60k 
and now we need to multiply this fraction with each component of the position vector from a to b so let's find it in calculator so 425 divided by 85 multiply by 40 that gives us 200 so 200 i then multiply by minus 45 minus 225 j and multiply by plus 60 so this gives us 300 so plus 300 Okay. So, this is the Cartesian vector representation of TAB and these are the components of the tension from A to B. This is the X component, this is the Y component and this is the Z component. Now, to find the resultant, we need to find the Cartesian vector representation of TAC. We need to find TAC in terms of I, J and K components. So, TAC vector will be equal to its magnitude so the magnitude is 510 times the unit vector from a to c and this will be 510 and the unit vector from a to c will be the position vector from a to c divided by its magnitude so t a c vector 510 now we need to find the position vector from a to c so again we need to travel from point a in x y and z in order to reach this point C. So from point A again we need to travel 45 inches in the negative y direction. So, so minus 45 j. So we will reach this particular point. Now from this particular point we need to travel this distance in the positive x. And this distance is 60 plus 40. So this is 100 inches so plus 100 i so first we need to travel this distance then this distance we will reach this point d and from point d we need to travel 60 inches in the positive z so plus 60 k so this is the cartesian uh, this is the position vector from a to c now we need to find the magnitude we need to take the square of all the components and then we need to take the square root so let's find the magnitude directly so 100 square plus 45 square plus 60 square this gives us magnitude equals to 125 or we can say that 510 divided by 125 multiplied by the position vector from a to c now let's find tac so 510 divided by 125 multiplied by 100 this gives us 408 i into minus 45 this is minus 183.6 j and multiply by 60 so this gives me uh, 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 let's say that uh, the j component is 184 approximately let's say this is 184 approximately so i will write it is 184 j and the z component is 245 k so plus 245 k so this is now tac and this is tab to find the resultant we need to add them so I will write TAB plus 200I minus 225J plus 300K. Now we need to find the resultant. So we need to add them. So this resultant will be equal to TAB plus TAC. We need to add i with i j with j and k with k so 408 plus 200 gives us 608 i minus 184 minus 225 gives us minus 409 j and 245 plus 300 gives us 545 k so this is the cartesian vector representation of the resultant at point A due to these two tensions in cable AB and cable AC.
now if if you want to find the resultant magnitude so the resultant magnitude will be equal to 608 square plus 409 square plus 545 square under the square root so this is approximately equal to 913 913 pounds now we were asked to find the direction of the resultant as well now we need to find the angle of the resultant with the x y and z axis respectively so we need to find theta x theta y and theta z now as we know that in terms of theta x theta y and theta z we can write the resultant vector is r cos of theta x i plus r cos of theta y j plus r cos of theta z k we have the x component of the resultant equals to 608 pounds so let me draw this um, and this is in the positive x so this is the x component of the resultant this is 608 this is the r x component this is the r x component of the resultant the r y component is negative so the the r y component will be acting somewhat like this so this will be the r y component this will be r y and similarly the r z component is 545 and it is in the positive z so let's say that this is the r z component and now if we add these three forces by head to tail rule we will get the resultant so let me add all these so we will have rx plus ry plus rz and the resultant will be from the tail of our x to the head of rz this is ry and this is now rz and the resultant will be from point a to somewhere here now we are we are asked to find the the direction of this resultant we are asked to find the angle of this resultant with the x axis so let's say that this is the axis x axis this is the z axis and this is the y axis so we need to find this angle so this angle will be theta x with the with the y axis this angle will be theta y let me draw the the axis at point a uh, first so this will be our z axis this will be our x axis and this will be our y axis so we need to find this angle with the x axis let's say this angle is theta x we, we, we need to find this angle let's say this is theta y and we, we need to find this angle theta z now as we already know that if if we know the component along the x axis and if this is the angle theta x made with that x component so this x component can always be written as a cos component of r in terms of that angle which is made with this particular component so we can say that our x our y and our z can always be represented in terms of theta x theta y and theta z and that will be the cos components so the r x component is r cos of theta x r y is r cos of theta y and r z is r cos of theta z and theta x theta y and theta z are the angles of the resultant with the corresponding axes so now we know our x magnitude this is our x this is our y this is our z so we can say that this r x r cos of theta x is equal to 608 and we know the r magnitude as well this is 913 so from this we can say that cos of theta x is 608 divided by the resultant magnitude which is 913 and if we take cos inverse we will be able to find theta x so theta x is equal to cos inverse 608 divided by 913 so this gives me 48.25 degree angle with the positive x-axis. Similarly, 
uh, this r cos of theta y will be equal to this uh, minus 409 and we can say that cos of theta y will be equal to the r y magnitude minus 409 divided by the r magnitude which is 913 and similarly cos inverse of minus 409 divided by 913 will give us theta y angle which is 116.61 degrees and similarly cos of theta z will be equal to r z magnitude which is 545 divided by the r magnitude so 545 divided by 913 this is theta z so theta z is equal to 53.34 degrees now as we can see in this diagram from from the known components we can see that the angle between the resultant and the x component is less than 90 degree this is theta x and theta x comes out to be 48.25 degrees and similarly the resultant is making this angle with the z axis is this is theta z and this is also less than 90 degree and this is 53.34 and similarly the angle with the y axis is this which is obviously greater than 90 degree and it is equal to 116.61 degrees so this is the cartesian vector for the resultant and this is the magnitude of the resultant and theta x theta y and theta z are the direction of the required res resultant so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope it will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from vector mechanics by bear and johnston